Whenever possible, try to get reference material for what you're planning to build. This can cut your time in half. You might have a scanned picture or drawing of what you want. If you're making a person, then reference material is not hard to find. I've included a front and side image of a head for us to build. They're both the same size and the front and side line up with each other. This makes it easier to use in Max. One way we can use this reference material is to highlight the viewport we want the picture in and under Views, Viewport Background, select the file and make it match the bitmap so it doesn't stretch. I'll do the same for the right view. With lock, zoom, pan on, we don't have to worry about our picture moving out of position. Another way is to create two flat surfaces and use the pictures as materials. Let's use patch grids since we're learning surface tools. You can use keyboard entry to create it right at zero zero. Now open the material editor and assign the picture to the diffuse. Select show map in viewport and apply the material. Now copy it for the side. Some people like to build the pieces of the face one at a time and then join them. You might start with a nose and then an eye and then weld them together. I prefer to lay out the entire face and only do the ear separately. The end result is exactly the same. Let's start in the front view and draw the contours of the face. The reason we put these two planes at zero zero is to make it easier to keep our center line straight. As always, we're just going to build one half of the face and mirror the other side. If we want to make one side of the face different, it's easier to do that at the end. We'll outline the face in splines using only squares and triangles. I'll start with everything being smooth and then change the vertices to bezier that need more detail. To make it easier to line up all of our vertices, let's turn on our vertex ticks under display. We want to start at this point and continue up and over to this one. We'll use snap to put them right on top of each other. Because we chose smooth, it's snapping to the steps in between the points. So I'll change it from vertex to endpoint. And adjust the strength while we're here. It's also snapping to the steps on the patch grid. We can edit the patch and lower the steps to zero. Let's do the same for the other patch grid. Now we're back. We'll trace the face, trying to keep the vertices lined up. Now we'll start making our grids. Try to stick to mostly quads. It's easier to smooth out a seam from quad to quad than from quad to try.
When asked to weld vertices, it's important to know when to say yes or no. If you weld lines at a right angle, then that area will be harder to keep fluid. The create line method we are using automatically welds to other endpoints, which we don't always want. Later, we'll go back and decide which spline shouldn't be welded. If you get tired of it asking you whether or not to weld, then change the weld distance to zero. The quads on top of the head will be much bigger since we don't need as much detail there. Before I put multiple points on the center line, let's move all those points to zero, zero. With move already selected, right click on it and type in the coordinates. Clicking the one below is the same as hitting return. I'll snap these together. This loop up here is an example of one that welded that we didn't want to. I'll break that weld. Whenever moving these points, it's important to grab both points. You can do this by always using a crossing selection, or you can use an area selection. With this on, it will grab all the points within that distance. Now on to the bottom half of the face. We'll add more detail for the nostril later. The rest just falls into place. Let's put all of these in the center. <laughs> 